Okay, for this video I'll be working through question 3 of the level 2 2015 uh, mechanics exam. So, question 3. Janet arrives home, she parks a car on a slope that is 12 degrees to the horizontal, as shown on the diagram below. Here we have the car. Draw labelled arrows to show the individual forces acting on the car. So, as you might see, this is just a single piece of paper because this is my second time trying to make this video because I felt like the first time I did a very poor sort of example of explaining things. So, before we even start, we're going to put it, point out our centre of mass of the car. And if you can sort of see, there is a wee dot that looks like a door handle, but it's not. That's, I'm guessing, where they're letting us know the centre of mass is the car. So, all our arrows need to come from the centre of mass. So, by now, you should know how to draw a free body diagram. This is what's called a free body diagram. So, gravity always acts straight down. So, I'm going to draw gravity in first. Gravity straight down. And I'll make sure they're all roughly to scale. And I've used a ruler. Don't freehand it. I'm sick of students freehanding arrows and making things hideously ugly and unreadable and I'm going to label it FG and what so I'll put FG and I'll, I'll draw my key later so gravitational force um, for every surface if something's on the surface there's a normal force or reaction force um, that acts so here's my surface here so it means I'm going to have a reaction force that's going to be exactly um, perpendicular or right angles or tangent um, whatever synonym you like to the surface. So here's my surface. I'm making sure I'm exactly right angles. And this force has to be less than the gravitational force. Um, reason being is because it's not in line with gravity. If it was in line with gravity, if this was just a dead flat road, they'd have to be equal if the car wasn't moving. Um, and we're also, yeah, we'll just, we'll just get that. So it's normal force. If in normal force, um, Sometimes it's called the F reaction force, FR, but I like to save FR for friction. So as it says, um, she parks the car, so it's not moving, so that means it's stationary. So that means ordinarily, like, there's two ways to explain this. Ordinarily, a car would want to roll down the hill, so there must be some sort of force up the hill um, stopping the car from going down the hill. But using that sort of, uh, sort of idea, would make you think that the force could be sort of pointing down a bit or pointing up. Um, it just acts parallel to the to the surface, and the reason being, as you'll see later, is if we add the normal force and the gravitational force, there needs to be some force that balances the two out. Um, let's make this kind of small to sum to zero. So hopefully we can see that. If uh, I'll move this, actually, I'm gonna move this. Now here, so this is FR, FR. Now I put a key over here, so this is FN. This is the support slash normal force. And if you don't know what that is, you'll have to look it up in any physics textbook. It's just, it's just the name of it. FG. We all know what gravity is. Gravitational force. Force. And then we've got F R. Notice I'm labeling things, otherwise people seem to think F R should be reaction force or resultant force. If you label it, the examiner can't get confused, and if they do, then you can take it back to them, tell them that it's labeled correctly, you should mark me right. Uh, friction of road, road. Or you can just put frictional force. Here we go, right. Explain in terms of the forces acting on the car, how the car remains stationary on the slope. You may draw a vector diagram to help your explanation. This means you should or you must draw a vector diagram to help your explanation. Otherwise, you won't get full points. At a guess, this is probably a merit question, but before we even start, you if you don't know how to do this, look up vector addition. There's plenty of ways this is explained. Um, most of the ways I've ever seen this explained is very poorly and not very intuitively so if you know how to do vector math which is just pictorial math um, everything sort of makes sense so for starters I'm just going to draw my normal force and it's sort of off to the left a little bit making sure I draw it to scale so I'm going to F, F N F N and then I'm going to plus my resultant force which was sort of up a little bit 
and I'll just put plus my result on force just sort of up a little bit and if we notice here that there's right angles that is that is right angles here because this is parallel to the surface uh, perpendicular surface this is parallel so we can put all the right angles here but we just need to know that and that they're right angles if uh, plus and if G is straight down and it should be slightly bigger than if n here we go if G and if we add them all together we should add them like numbers so if this was a number 2 and this was a number 3 you go 2 plus 3 is 5 then plus this you can add them in any order but try and add it sequentially so you don't confuse yourself um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add if and you always do tip to tail that's just addition of vectors so tip to tail my student or you should know how to do this if you don't look up Khan Academy vector addition it's not just vector addition on Wikipedia so then here's my if n if n now my resultant force has to be right angles to this oh dear right angles to this I think I've done it a little bit large here. I think I have. I might cut that back a bit. I'll just scribble that out. Yep. And I shouldn't have drawn that F in, F, F in there yet. Because that is meant to be my FG. FG. I'll cross that out. Let's put this as FN. This here is FG. And this is FR. Friction. Put a wee right angles in there. As we can see we started from that this is going to be our origin we started from our origin we went up we went across and then we went back down so the the sum of the forces is equal to zero because we started here and we ended here so if this is zero started with zero we end with zero so the sum of, so we're going to say as we oh can't see that can we we can see see the forces sum to zero. And I'm a very messy person, so you should be a lot neater than me. I shouldn't have done that F in there. Should have been out here. This is FG. That's all we right angles in here. So they sum to zero. So the vectors sum together, uh, sum together um, to zero. So the net force is zero. So it means the car, the car remains stationary and if in just so we really know what this if in is the component of gravity component um, of gravity uh, into the slope slope and if Friction is a component of gravity down the slope. Because if you think about it, if you took away gravity, you wouldn't have either of these forces. You wouldn't need a friction force. They would just sit there and float. And you wouldn't have a normal force because it wouldn't be pushing on the surface. Or, or Yeah, pushing on the surface. Component of, of gravity, gravity down the slope. The slope. So we need to state that that's gravity. You know, it's these components of gravity. Um, and that, yeah, that's what the normal force and that's what the friction force is. So that's, that's uh, explains it to how the car is managed to happen. I actually answered the question, yeah, as we can see, the forces sum to zero. So that is what actually answers the question. Um, and then we see this is the car remains stationary. Um, vector diagram, it's all labeled. The key is up here. Done. Right, next question. Calculate calculations to show how the Forces keep the start car stationary while it's parked on the slope. You may draw a vector diagram to help your calculations. The mass of the car is 1500 kilograms. Um, right, so, so let's blow up this triangle here. Let's make this quite large so we can actually sort of see what we're doing. So we're going to do a large triangle and let's sort of make it a little but disproportionate. Large triangle, here we go. So it's going to be my normal force. I'm not going to put my labels on there yet. This needs to be right angles to that. Yeah, and I know to stop because this adds to zero, so it means gravity acts straight downwards, so it means it should all, oh dear, done it again. 
here we go that that and that. this is FG I'll put a proper G on that yeah that's F N this is F R friction force and if this is the small little angle, you can obviously, and this is the right angle here. This is a small angle, it's just common sense, you shouldn't need to proof it ge uh, geometrically. That's 12 degrees, this here is going to be 12 degrees here. I'm going to call this theta, I'm going to put theta over here is equal to 12 degrees, or theta, however you like to pronounce it. Yep, FG, it's just mass times, well it's, just, it's a force, so it's acceleration times mass, but the acceleration is gravity. So it's mass times gravity, which equals 1500 kilos. It's up here, kgs. It's given to us right here. Yeah, times 9.8. Your level 2 NCA, so you only use 9.8. Level 3, you use 9.81 because all your answers should be in two significant figures, except for when they decide to be stupid, like they have done this question, and there's no way to give it in two. And the marking schedule doesn't give it in two significant figures, so I don't know what's going on with this, but just whatever they want to do. Right, component of gravity into the slope, which means I'm going to be working out F n. Right, so F n. So let's label our diagram. So this is the hypotenuse because it's the longest side. Can we see it's the longest side? My video is spazzing out of it, and this is my normal force, so it's the adjacent, so if I have the adjacent and I have my hypotenuse from Soka Toa, I'm going to use cos, um, so I'm going to have cos theta is equal to A over H, or the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse, if I'm going to move the, if I want to find the adjacent, which I want to find, I want to find Fn, Fn equals <clears throat> equals the hypotenuse, so I'm going to move the hypotenuse over here by timesing both sides by the hypotenuse and the hypotenuse is Fg because this is the hypotenuse so it's Fg cos theta equals the adjacent but I'm not going to put equals over here over here because just you know um, Fg, oh I didn't calculate that over here, that equals 14700 newtons to awkwardly 3SF but it could be more um, because I haven't really, well it is actually 3 so if these are just placeholders. Um, but this one I'm going to do to an awkward amount of significant figures because I might need to use it later. Newtons, 1,478 newtons, that seems reasonable because it should be just slightly less than gravity because this is a normal force, it's a component of this, so it means it's less than gravity, so yeah, it's right. Um, it seems right. It probably should be right. Um, component of gravity acting down the slope. Slope bracket F R. So it's my friction force. Um, F R equals, so this is the opposite, I have my hypotenuse, there's a sketch up here, O H means I'm going to use sines, it means sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, this is just trigonometry, I still use Sokotoa, um, even though I know it all off by heart, I just still refer back to it because it's a nice wee neat way to do it and it's always an easy simplistic way to teach kids to use algebra instead of using triangles. Um, right, so I'm going to move the H over to the far side because I've got H, I've got the hypotenuse. So it means FG sine theta is equal to FR, equal to friction force. And you'll notice that this is very similar and it's very similar to those projectile motion questions. Um, it's always It always pays to derive it yourself just so you don't muck it up. That equals 14700 times sine 12 degrees. I didn't actually put the numbers in for the previous question. It was 3056 newtons, which is tiny and that seems reasonable. So thus friction up, friction, oh, I'm not spelling this correctly, friction uh, FR, I'm not sure what FR is 
3056 newtons up newtons up the slope the slope right have I answered it yes carry out calculations to show how the forces keep the car stationary while it's parked on the slope you may use a vehicle diagram to show your calculation so it's a pretty unambiguous question it doesn't really go into detail what you want but this here does show it just show you just calculate the components um, and from the vector diagram before that they all add together to equal zero you just sort of show that all the components are, um, are essentially come from gravity they all derive from the component of gravity right next question the sofa in Janet and Rory's house has springs when Rory sits on the sofa the springs compressed by 0 0.75 or 0 0.075 meters um, calculate the elastic potential energy stored in the springs. Rory has a mass of 65 kgs. Well, this is good because I've used 2SF here, 2SF here. Finally, I can actually use 2SF in the answer. Right, so the two formulas um, for springs and stuff is force equals minus K. K is just a spring constant times X. And it's asking about the energy. Energy, EP, so it's a potential equals half k x squared there are two ways to go about this you haven't got the spring constant but you know the force the force is just mgh um, you know it's compressed by that amount so you know x um, so we can work out we'll work out what k is just using a little bit of algebra but i'm not going to solve it so i'm going to say k i'm going to divide divide both sides by x i'm going to move that x over to here so k equals um, minus k equals f over x uh, which equals mass times gravity over x I'm not going to calculate it out um, just because it's easier just to substitute this here this algebraic expression into this here but you can you can calculate k and if you calculate that out it'll give you 8,000 493 newton meters minus one and then you could put that k into here and then you could solve it and that would give you 24 joules of energy um, but a far more nicer way to do it is EP we see that is equal to half substituting in mg over x equals k m times g over x times x squared um, we can cancel out this x and that x squared equals half m g x and if you plug all that in you get 24 joules so there are two ways to go about it double checking uh, Roy sits on the sofa the spring is compressed by 0 0.7 or 0 0.075 a meter does that seem reasonable 24 joules yeah it's a tiny amount of energy but that seems reasonable um, and our answer is 2SF done.